Winner, Bracket, Final, and we got Fly and Mikael. Tell me that a year ago, and I would send you to the nut house right away. Both crazily increasing their shape this year. It all started, especially for Mikael, with WGTL, part of Rise Again, the team with his brother Thunder, and Moon, and we thought, okay, Moon has to be the carry, maybe they make top four, but, you know, their chances are not that high. And then there was Mikhail. Incredible. Yeah. He's been looking really good lately. He's been practicing a lot. He's kind of changed his life around, trying to, uh, you know, stay away from the sins. He has become more determined to his uh, play, to his practice. And he's been putting in the work and it's really showing. He's adopting some of the European style with the crypto. He has always been an experimental undead, not always sticking to just one strategy like Happy does. And he's really been looking very, very strong recently. He's always had these high points in his play. Inconsistency was very often Mikhail's problem. But recently, he has been able to keep up his form. And against Fly, he certainly will need to show his best. And Fly. Do we have to talk about him anymore? WCG group stage. He shook the world. Starting into this tournament with a 3-0 over Law Light in a matchup where everybody thought Orcs have no chance. And he continued his rampage on the way there. He also eliminated Sock. He eliminated WFZ. He eliminated Lin in the mirror match. Then Colorful and of course in the grand final, the Big Big Moon. World Cyber Games 2020 champion. Is he a favorite now for the Gold League as well? I would say so. I think he absolutely is one of the strongest players in the world. The question is, how good are his other matchups looking? Against Night Elf, he is insanely strong. Even before the most recent patch, he was looking super strong in that matchup, and now he's gotten even better thanks to the changes. How good is he against Undead is the question. One could argue that he should be looking there very strong as well again i referenced the game against xlord last wgl but especially his matchup against human that is usually where he is not as impressive as lin looks not something he's gonna have to worry about anymore for this group stage perhaps but probably for the quarterfinals for the playoffs indeed if fly makes a top two by the way he surpasses th in all-time earnings who would have thought that this happens in 2020. I certainly didn't. I thought TH would uh, rather look upwards to catch up to the Infies and Lins and Moons of this world, but uh uh, all of a sudden there's Fly with an insane year. What do we got here? The map picks and bans, Remo. We got Fly banning Amazonia and Echo Isles, Mikael banning Concealed Hill and Turtle Rock, leaving us with the starting map, Northern Isles, Terrana stand for Fly, and Last Refuge for Mikael. Okay, I think these bans here make a lot of sense, especially the ones by Fly. I like a lot. He removes the small maps. He wants to go late game, triple hero, probably. Mikael removes the tough expo maps for Cryptlot, I believe, leaving us with some pretty decently sized maps. LR, Terranus, and Northern all comparable in size in creep camps. This could definitely turn into fast expansion play, Cryptlot play, and then maybe two base, two base, lots of different options here available. Some undeads out there switch between styles nowadays, depending on the map, depending on the matchup, switching between DK Fiends and Cryptlord. But it seems like Mikael is all aboard the Cryptlord train. It seems like whenever he can play it, he will play it. And against Orc, you should be able to play it as well. Yep. We don't see it as much as against Human, but certainly still quite a bit. Definitely some European influence over there. This is a DreamHack rematch, by the way. Summer season they played, and there maybe Mikael was not uh, playing up to his full potential yet. It was a 2-0 for Fly, but there was a little bit of a rematch in the team event, in the World Cyber Games team event, to be precise. And there, Mikael took the win over Fly. So getting a little bit of a revenge. There were some qualifier matches in between as well, but, you know, Qualifier matches, we don't really count them as sometimes some wonky stuff <laughs> is played. So for me, this is almost 50-50 with a little bit of an advantage to fly. I would make that assessment as well going into this match, but uh, I haven't seen them in this matchup very recently. And there's always, you know... Developments happening, the cutting edge of this top level of competition is really exciting to see, and tournaments like these is where we see them getting exposed. 
Yesterday, I think we had a beautiful highlight of just that point with Lawlight versus Chimiko. Their series was wonderful to see. The Night Elf versus Human matchup constantly uh, is developing and in evolution. And I wonder what the latest state of evolution is here between two of the best players of their race in the world. Yeah. Is it going to be the ultra late game that we tend to see a little bit more these days in several matchups? Is it a weird faster expansion style? Here we have our two players on the left hand side WCG champion Fly in the studio in Shanghai. <sighs> he can't really afford to lose his Blade Master with the high stakes. Mikhail, first WGL tournament in two years. Is he going to make it into the playoffs right away for Fly? By the way, this may this this would mean the first time uh, playoffs in two years as well. It was the winter of 2018 when he was in a group with uh, Colorful Sock and Michael of all people, and there he made it. Mikael didn't, but then he fell to Moon in the quarterfinals. So both players. Not the greatest gold results recently. Looking damn hot, trying to make up for recent past, though. In the bottom left, we got one of the most uh, beloved players in China. It is Fly. And in the upper right, one of the Koreans that is most connected to the European scene. Good friend of Todd. And playing on W3 Champions as well, it is Mikael. Can he crown his rise with a top 8 WGL performance? Let's get into this, ladies and gentlemen, our first map, Northern Isles. And the first question that had to be asked is, what heroes are we going to be seeing? We were all expecting a Crypt Lord, and indeed, we do see it by Mikael. Seems like he is fairly predictable in that way. In fact, Fly is having the same guess, is making the same guess. He's playing a Farseer first, which is really good for pressuring Crypt Lord expansion. Orc has to, or can at least, go for a bit of a gamble early on. Farseer tends to not work that well against DK standard fiends, but can work very well against Crypt Lord expansion play. Michael does that a lot, and seems like Fly rolled the dice and uh, had the right guess. Absolutely. And this it was Fly who had major problems with... The Crypt Lord in summer. Hope he learned quite a bit. Focus, on the other hand, in the lower bracket, he pretty much demolished X Lord and figured out exactly what to do against it. How much has this matchup developed? Peon Scout is already there, as uh, Fly can go for with the 11 supply. Great haul nowadays, and the Farseer rushes right over. It's going to be two summon heroes against each other. It's going to be Beetles versus Wolves. Yeah, this helps Orc a lot in many matchups nowadays, especially against Undead nowadays with the Crypt Lord. You don't just have to blindly walk there with the Blade Master hoping to find something you can scout ahead of time. On this map specifically, Orc has a good opening build against the Crypt Lord. You can scout, make sure he creeps the green camp first, walk over with a Farseer, and if he's going for the green, then you can still go for the green camp yourself. And if you're lucky, find the Lightning Shield! <laughs> Two charges of Lightning Shield is gonna make creeping this natural quite difficult. This is so much damage. Cast it on a creep so the ghouls and beetles, they have to evacuate, have to abandon this camp. Maybe it results in a grunt surround though. Michael, Mikael, not going for it. Completely retreat. And oh, he's going for the bigger wow. target! Look at this! What a swift surround and fly Ooh, and snare on the grunt. This wasn't the greatest harass. It was a great item he found. It was a good lightning shield summon, but afterwards, pretty much everything went in favor of Mikhail. That was a sick salvage, dude. If Mikhail doesn't get that surround, his early game is completely screwed. There's another lightning shield coming through, there's more damage from the wolves, more ghouls dying, more beetles dying, complete disaster, expo cancelled. But Mikhail, e seems like even before the surround, he decided to start the tech, so he actually can't afford an expansion right now. Not yet, but maybe on the way to tier 2 or at tier 2. He d he's kind of establishing it. Maybe he's faking it a little as well. Fly is rushing over right away. The wolves see this ziggurat attempt at least and he doesn't scout the main base so he's not 100% sure what's happening. He can assume it, he can guess it, but he doesn't know. This ziggurat will be cancelled. Impale is dangerous here. Impale surround on the far side that it could quickly lead to a kill. Level 1 Impale doesn't have a long stun duration, but uh, Farseer 
can still land in that encirclement, so he has to make sure he's careful. Would love to see a tele staff, perhaps, by flying, yeah. to be able to get out of those. Fire oh, Lord! Fire Lord second, just like Focus did. Indeed, okay. Focus versus 120. That was where we saw the orcs picking the Fire Lord. That was kind of the new, new idea by the Korean. And Fly is picking it off. My stream is spiking a bit, but now it seems to be fixed. And now we got three to four summons, which is not easy to salvage as Mikael's tier three. And with that, Dispel will arrive a little late. I wonder if Fly has the wrong read here, though. In the game, yeah. by 1-0 to zero against Focus, it was a make-or-break expansion attempt by 1-0, to zero, whereas here it is now the tech instead. Oh, Impale going for the Farseer. Might be able to have that surround. Oh my god, he gets out. Lava spawn blocked the way, but then he stops moving again. Oh my god, Fly. Well, he's going to lose the Farseer now with another surround. Impale. Oh, no oh. way. On 2 HP, he gets away. Are you kidding me? What a sick save. Maybe the beetle. Yeah, the beetle is chasing him. There is this region going on. DK second for more nuke and more healing. So far, this Fire Lord is creating quite some space. But for what is the question? Will we see tier 3? Will we see an expansion? Fly has to make a deci decision relatively soon. Is that enough already? Tier 3 by Mikhail. Obviously, he needs destroyers against this. Yeah, Fly needs to get far ahead in the mid game. He's got two bad late game heroes. They have summons which are good now for creeping, but the longer this game goes, if we get to 50, 60, 70 supply, they will fall off a lot. So Fly is kind of in trouble here. I think the Fire Lord second works out very well against the do or die expansion attempt, but it wasn't. Mikhail was teching instead. Maybe that Ziggurat made yeah. him convinced that it was a fast expansion all the way through, but it wasn't. Last hit, misses, so many impales, kind of not leading to victory. And now the crypto is completely out of mana. Bursting through this, he gets a grunt and probably a couple of summons, so early XP for the DK. Raiders, do we have Ensnare yet? We absolutely do follow up on that fiend, but there's a lot of coils here and not too much damage with the Siege of Raiders, but <laughs> Lightning Shield grants you a little bit. Did that fiend die? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Wolves should have been able to chase that down. That's double level twos now for Fly. Going Soul Burn. No. What's it called again? Incinerate? Inc what's it called again? Disrespecting the best orb in the game. Uh, well, it is rarely seen for good reason. Fire Lord in general, a very rarely picked hero. He has very niche potential, usually for making use of the summons and then pressuring hard. But now he can't really pressure too well anymore, but he keeps on creeping. Fly knows he doesn't have the best late game army. He needs to keep on accelerating, keep on pressing his advantage. He cannot really let Michael unfold. Cannot really, get him, cannot really let him get to high levels. He's got the Wyvern now for damage. He's got the Raiders for ensnare. He can pick off some ghouls, but the fiends seem to be safe and so are the heroes. <sighs> Quite a crazy back and forth, right? This is... No tier 2 expansion, he's trying to go for tier 3. And he should have the time, as Mikhail is also still waiting for this. What's the third hero gonna be for Fly then? He kinda needs healing, he also needs crowd control, he kinda got disabled with soul burn, but not nearly as strong as Stomp or Hex. Or do you just play this with two heroes? Focus, I think, played it with the third hero. Yeah, very curious as well. So, good levels here on Fly. He's got the level lead. He can assert some uh, dominance here. He's got map control still. But, he won't have it for too much longer. Mikhail will get his orb, will get his triple hero, will get his 3-2 levels, and will get to 50 supply. And then, it's gonna be really tough for Fly to still play a competitive game, but he's trying to make up for it with better levels. He's gonna get level 3 Fire Lord here. Is that Soul Burn? Is that Lava Spawn? The nice thing is, against Destroyers, which counter the Fire Lord, that's already Wyvern and Ensnare ready. So, maybe Destroyers he can deal with. 
Okay, depends a little on the nuke, of course. Pendant of Energy for the Crypt Lord, who's also very, very tanky. It is, of course, the Lich third for Mikael. There's no question about that. 10 supply lead for Fly, but that is due to the nature of the later tier 3 tech. Investing into a couple of items. We got the healed stone that is nice as there will be hero nuke for sure on these two squishy orc heroes and healed scroll as well it is level two wolves at level two soul burn as well great play by fly here he checks the lab he knows if he's not there he must be at the red camp and here comes the creep jack now red cap camp goes to mikhail he gets the helm of valor decent item for him not the greatest impale Going for these raiders right away. The Lich is in trouble getting focused and killed. Level 1 coil didn't come through. I believe it was because of the soul burn. Didn't exactly see it. DK might be getting away. The Fiend saved via Boro. But also for that, there is detection. Dust was not forgotten. Fly, despite his mediocre heroes, is playing this game so well. Pressuring the map perfectly and playing from a leading position. Oh, a That's the way you have to play this strat. Little bit of a misrelay on the Fiend, didn't park it, has to go through the Orc army now as well. Fly is pushing forward with the next end snare, this could very well be it! Wow. What a wonderful execution, Fly just explodes in that fight! And that is Orc fireworks right here! 32 supply, only 15 supply deficit, 2 hero kills as well! This is definitely Fly at 100%. Yes, yeah, sick game by him. Maybe the Fire Lord a little over eager by him earlier, but the way he plays with that second hero, perfect. Not just the execution, the fights, but also knowing what he has to do, what the tempo of the game is looking like, and what the late game will demand from him. Very, very impressive. And now he's got easily big enough of a lead that he can go for a tiny Great Hall expansion and keep on playing from ahead. That is so important. With these two summon heroes, you have to play from a leading position, and Fly always was able to ensure he never gave that up. Okay, how do you get back now? The heroes for Mikael still scale a lot better. There's quite some experience on the upper left-hand side. There's the Scorpions and there's also the Red Spot, but this is definitely, definitely time for Fly to expand. And that's the tiny Great Hall right here. So, Mikael is on a timer. And it's the Shadow Hunter third. Not choosing a skill point yet. Heal wave, of course, always very good. Healing just in general is always of help. But if he goes for Hex, he has some serious disable between Soul Burn and that Hex. We do have Destroyers now, but Wyvern pretty good against them. And he flies in. One Wyvern getting webbed. Nova hits big and no healing here at the moment. DK getting focused right away with the Ensnares with a Soul Burn. Might be able to survive or maybe not. Here comes the Hex follow up. Chain Lightning coming through. DK dead. Healer down. Aura missing as well. There's no TP here anymore for Mikael. Now the Lich getting focused. Oh so God. much disable. He's doing a great job chasing with the Ensnare. And this might be it. Good old smart play. Just aim for the heroes, kill them, and what does the undead have left then? Pretty much nothing. The Crypt Lord alone can't win games. Really, a destroyer is now there against the summons. Okay, he can dispel a little bit, but he's missing the coils, he's missing the Nova, he's missing the Orb of Corruption. Four hero kills in two fights. This is brilliant by Fly. Honestly, they're losing both. Quite a lot. The Crippler is now level 4, but the thing is, Fly can afford to trade now because he's up a base. He can reproduce so much more easily. Wyvern, of course, as we see, die very fast once they get wet, but also so many units going down for Mikael. GG is called. Fly gets the 1 0 win. What a performance! <laughs> it was a pretty clear game. Fly convincingly wins that one, but if you dissect the game, how well Fly played at all points knowing exactly what he had to do. Wonderful to see. That was really incredible. Maybe misled a little bit in the early game, but it didn't really matter to him. He found a second way to play this, not with the ultimate pressure on the economy, as we usually see this new strat, but hero focus all the way. Brilliant. I'm, I'm in awe, Remo. Yeah, this was so well done. The fact that he brings in the first raider, limits the fiend numbers, slows down the creeping, falls back a little, gets level 3, then comes in with a 50 supply push with the heal scroll, kills the heroes, keeps on playing from ahead. 
I've been saying this five times now, but that's how important it is. <laughs> you need to make sure you don't let the undead arrive comfortably in the late game. Because then you're going to be screwed. If that's like four, three, two hero levels with 60 supply, fiends, destroyers, no chance for the orc anymore. Yeah, that, that was, was a fight. crucial creepjack here at the red camp. The Wyvern and Raiders also make a lot of sense to quickly put in the damage before there's a strong coil to counteract all that damage. And it started so well with the surround on the Farsia and almost the kill on the Farsia in the middle of the map as well, but just barely couldn't get it. As you said, 2 HP. Maybe that separated him from a quick victory here on Northern Isles. And then it backfired, and then Fly was there. From that moment on, it was dominance and hero kills all the way. That's a great start. Fly not struggling as he was against Shao Kai. Just playing a very, very good game. Truly impressive. I wonder if he had a misread there and he thought... Mikhail was trying to brute force through this expansion, mm -hmm. or if he was aware that there was a tech happening and he still went for the Fire Lord regardless. Gonna be interesting to follow here as the rest of this uh, series continues. Remaining maps we have our Terna Stand and Last Refuge, both certainly possible expansion maps, especially Terna Stand. Very defensive map, normally easily can lead to an expansion, but if a Farseer harasses right away from the start, Sometimes not that easy. Indeed. Time to recover. Now is Mikhail's pick, and that is Last Refuge. This should be another expansion for him then, as you can see. So this is uh, Last Last Refuge. Sorry, not Terrace. And Terrace then, of course, for Fly. Still, a little bit of an easier expansion here. Can be pressured, of course, with another Farsia. Here we have a mercenary camp access that orcs can go for if they want to. But this is Mikael's pick for a reason. Yeah, Last Refuge, the expansion, certainly a lot easier to create, but it is in many regards very similar to Northern Isles for opening builds. The Orc is going to harass right away, he's going to scout first, and if it's a Crypt Lord, then he's going to run across the map right away. And the Crypt Lord, if he wants to play it safe, has to go for a green camp first before going for the expansion. In that case, the Farseer or Blade Master can also go for one small green, the High Priest, to again hope for a Lightning Shield. But on this map, a Lightning Shield isn't as painful as on Northern Isles. If you put that Lightning Shield on the Tuscar, put it on the Ogre Magi on Northern Isles, it's super painful for the Undead with those beetles and skeletons and everything where that AoE damage suddenly kicks in really hard. Yeah, Mikael, he abandoned the fast expansion plans on Northern, but on Last Refuge, it's extremely hard to stop that as orc. Pretty much impossible. Well, nothing seems to be impossible for Fly at the moment. Not even making a Farseer Fire Lord work. Mikael's first map loss in the tournament. And now, how well is he prepared mentally for this? Will this drag him down? Will this uh, motivate him? Was it just poking the bear? And Fly for the first time playing from a lead. Against Zhao Kai, he lost the first map where Zhao Kai played it very, very well with a DK Fiend standard. Are we going to see Michael return to DK Fiends or is it Crypt Lord all the way through? We're going to find out. It's, by the way, interesting if you look at Michael's player camera. He looks like his screen is five meters big. He's looking everywhere. Well, you will hopefully see that in a bit when the player camps are on. Especially during a fight, like his eyes are all across. I don't know how big this thing is. Playing in front of his plasma TV, perhaps? <laughs> Probably. 35 inch. Well, maybe that helps him here with the expansion play. Probably gonna be the case this time. I would be surprised if he abandons it once again. We saw the build for Mikhail already. It is Ghouls once again. So Ghouls, Crypt Lord, once more fly. What's he gonna go for? Farseer can, of course, be the choice, but on this map, you can also go for Blade Master, a quick circlet, and an easy High Priest camp. That's a very strong start for the Blade, but it's still the Farseer. It is still the Farseer. As it was the case against. Exlord as well, right? Yes. Yes. So we didn't change that up. 
Against Exalt, it was mostly Farseer pressure in the beginning, and then Tier 2 Shadowhunter follow up, Raider Walker, a lot of pressure, a lot of map control, and then counter expansion at some point. That's how he uh, was playing it back then. Back then, of course, the Crypt Lord quite a bit stronger than he is now. Beatles have since then been slowed down the movement speed, HP reduced, and also uh, mana cost increased, in fact, and Borrow removed. So a lot of things have been changed. Crypt Lord has been curbed, but can still certainly be good. Mikael wasn't able to get the victory there on map one. Map two, though. Should be looking a little easier for him, at least as far as the opening goes. Indeed. These players, by the way, among the oldest in the tournament. Mikael, 34 years old already. The oldest player. Fly a little younger than Moon and Lin, but also 33 years old. So high average age, but nonetheless, they keep on impressing us. Doesn't feel like uh, these are rusty or old or slow or anything. This is still top-notch Warcraft. Fly is being aggressive right away instead of creeping the green camp. He could have gone for the High Priest, doesn't do it, rather wants to pressure the Crypt Lord right away, who's down to about half HP. Interesting. Okay. No damage on the ghouls. Ring of Protection, of course, okay for him against the early pressure. So Grunt's Wolves against Ghouls Beetles. What this also does, this pressure, is it forces the Crypto to summon a little more beetles. It's going to drain his mana pool for when he gets level 2 with the Impale. There might be fewer of those. And when he's level 3, then also uh, fewer level 2 beetles. Ritual, Dagger being used, but also cancelled right away. Mikai would love to get another surround right here. Fly has to try to make sure he doesn't get surrounded here. He's playing on the edge, but not ultra greedy. Not like he plays his Blade Master, a little more conservative. It's not much damage done, but it's so much time. Mikael not really too confident to go into this. Now passing the mercenary camp, but Fly hires his next mercenaries in the oh, Murloc. So oh, and he gets surrounded again. Quite some creeps involved. Okay, trying to fight out with the wolves. That might work. Now he's blocking. Oh, no, surround closed again. And that's the second... TP in the second match on Northern Isles. That didn't bring Mikael the victory, but here it very well might. He left the Wolves and the Grunt behind. Yeah, Fly did a good job there, waking up the creeps, being disruptive, but then getting surrounded, definitely a big mistake. And he walks the Grunt into uh! Ensnare range. Oh, but he blocked him free. Nicely done. And the Ogre Major is still up for grabs, by the way. The Farseer is coming back here. Yeah, no Chain Lightning to get the last hit, but still oh! decent damage. Wait, he... Whoa! He got it. Whoa, he got it. You seem to be a split second ahead of me for some reason. Here comes the next Impel. He needs to get this around. Otherwise, it's looking really grim. No Staff to get out. Maybe it's the Grunt. It is. But Fly is doing so much damage and buying so much time, and he kills the Acolyte. I think he can take that trade. Impale now ready, and he is going for the Farseer. All right. This time, he can't fight out, and there is no way out. Tier 2 coming, TC, and double Beastery this time. Okay. Wyvern, perhaps. Would have expected a Farseer Tavern revive. There is... Almost enough gold for that. If he doesn't go for it, it's going to take forever to the Farseer to come back. But yeah, that getting surrounded that first time when there was no Impale, that's not really supposed to happen. But still, very good delay by Fly. Even if it cost him the hero, but it cost him the hero and a Grunt. Certainly was quite expensive. Now the expansion is coming up for Mikael. And uh, this one certainly shouldn't be getting cancelled. No, not against this mass ghoul. He needs time for the TC. And since the TC was still in progress, the Farseer definitely delayed. Usually level 1 heroes very easy to produce. But that was a level 2 hero thanks to the Yoga Magi kill. So fly for quite some time on level 1. That is finally some freedom for the Crypt Lord. That is finally level 3. Had to invest into the Ritual Dagger. Gets some eyes on the map now with Beetle scouting. With the Watcher Wards probably in the middle. Situation is getting better for Mikael after what was almost a disaster. 
And Fly's gonna be staying on tier 2 for a long time. Some orcs love rushing tier 3 against Crypt Lord, going then for a counter expansion, playing pretty passively, and getting ready for the late game. Fly is way more tier 2 focused. We saw that also a lot in his games against Night Elf. Very different matchup, of course, but he loves playing tier 2 emphasis, putting on pressure, and possibly getting ahead in the mid-game stages. But this Crypt Lord is leveling really damn well. He's gonna yes. get to three and a half. He's gonna get a big item here. Rune Bracers, it's not really the greatest for him, but certainly good XP. Crypt Lord has come, uh, the TC is coming and he is trying to cancel wow. this Haunted, level, but... Level 1 TC aggression without a staff, without a TP, with the Crypt Wait, Lord just around the corner? This looks a little ill-advised, of course, with the Wyvern. This is brute force, but it's actually working. Sacrifices the TC for this. Farsia coming in now as well. Mana on the Crypt Lord, slowly but steady, looking better. I'm not sure if that's worth the trade. The TC is supposed to be a carry. The thing is, the Wyvern can cancel this over and over now again. Yes. This might be brilliant by Fly. Look at that. They're back in. They're canceling it again. Oh my god. This could have cost him the Grunt as well. Fly was kind of uh, lucky it was only the TC. Spirit Tower is in range of the Wyvern. Not too sure how long he can do that. He's also buying Mercs. He's getting more anti-air. Mikhail's reaction is definitely the right one. Oh, one Wyvern goes down. If he parks them all the way in the back there, the tower can't reach. Expensive investments by Fly, but he is preventing the expansion here for a really long time. Wow, that risk. That sacrifice of the TC. A very new approach. Haven't seen that at all, I think. Especially not from Orcs. Moving away from the normal power creeping at the early stages of Tier 2 and just power aggression. And again the cancel. These towers and these mercenaries aren't enough yet, but if Mikael gets, the, f I think, the first fiend out, that's over. Yeah, also the fact that it went for the Berserker was really smart. If he didn't have a Berserker, nothing could do anything to these Wyvern. So that Berserker, crucially important. The thing is, yeah, Fly is delaying the expansion, but it will come up at some point, and then what's his follow-up? What's his transition? He's not creeping. He's stuck on TC level 1. I'm very curious. <laughs> How many times did he cancel the expo now? Four times? Five times? Counting is hard, you know me. Of course the Wyvern can soon be used to creep. How far is Mikael's tech guy, I wonder? Still only ghoul, still no anti-air. Yeah, if Fly was on the way to tier 3 and could slap down a tiny Great Hall very soon, I would be like, okay, this is pretty cool. They're laying the expansion, you're getting up Wyvern, they're good in the late game, you can go tiny Great Hall, and then you have two base, two base, you have a strong TC. Yeah. Makes sense. But there is no tier 3. Nope. It's only tier 2 for Fly. And now the brute force attacks are over. Mikael is approaching tier 2 for the Wyvern, for the web. Fly has a transition in place already with raiders. So how heavy is he commit? What's his army composition and what's his game plan? Is it a late tier 2 expansion? Is it base race? Lots of options for him now, but of course not too much time anymore. The Ensnare is very strong right now. He can easily pick off some important units. He would love to find this Berserker, but can't find it. That one is still parked behind the gold mine, I believe. Oh, nice beetle block as well. Make sure the Raider doesn't get quite into range. One ghoul goes down, but that's affordable. Again, Fly playing with momentum, playing with tier 2 map control. That's how he loves to play his games. But... Michael isn't providing a very juicy opening right now. No. 
attacking the towers, but there's five acolytes here ready to repair. Well, with Ensnare, it's only three. That's a TC surrounded. Oh no! There's once again no staff. He's not focusing on it, though. He's going for the raiders to lower the damage on the building, but now he finds himself in a surround once again. No TP. There was a big heal potion, so maybe he was baiting that, so the damage isn't ending up on the wyvern, and wait, is he? No, he's blocked there again. Lucifer closing that exit, and this might be a raider oh. and a TC. Or nothing! Storms his way oh out with God. the speed scroll fly, you genius! Apparently all calculated with that potion. How does he know that that is gonna work? He is so brilliant. Almost everyone else would be thinking, well, there's two towers there, there's nothing I can do. But yeah. no. Fly realizes he can take out the tower when the Nerub is gone. He's not going to get slowed anymore. Mikael is going to have to come in with everything he has to defend. And then Stomp is going to be very effective. He's got good damage from the Wind Riders. And he could even take out that tower. I never thought that would have been enough for the tower. Me neither. And we see... A transition by Mikael that is Gargoyles. And we see a transition from Fly and that is Bad Riders. These Garks, um, they won't fare too well. The Bad Rider will justify the means, and I wonder if he's going for Liquid Fire on Tier 3. Oh, absolutely could be the case. It just keeps on being aggressive. I wait, I'm waiting for the moment for Fly to just horribly overextend, but it doesn't happen. It's not happening yet. Two detonates come in. Of course, the Bad Riders one-shot the Gargoyles, but we have still plenty left after that. Good you... kiting with the speed scroll. Yeah. Also chain All lightning the against them. kept alive. Well, the Bad Riders died, I suppose, but the Wyvern are still alive. Fly didn't decide for a second spell. Okay, now it's Storm. I thought for a second. If that's a bigger kiting game, do you want to go Endurance or a second? Might have been a play at 50 supply now. But in the long scheme of things... Fly still has to crack the expansion or build his own. Yeah, I think he's kind of fine now to just counter expand. His tier 3 is about to finish. He's going to get a few more kills with his bad riders. Memes justified. Oh, doesn't quite get into range. Gargs can dodge that at some point with stone form, but for that you need tier 3. And the thing is, Michael Mikael is now himself stuck on tier 2. I think he may have just started tier 3, but it's not going to be ready for a long time. Okay, here we go, tier 3. Is it in a fire? Is it envenomed spears? Is it a Kodo, maybe? Or is it just a tiny Great Hall? It is, at first, just a tiny Great Hall. And he's playing two base, two base. Also, Mana Stone on the TC. Very nice. Good scouting by Mikael as well. Making sure that he knows if there's an attack coming from the left-hand side. There's a scout running south. And making sure with another beetle if there's an expansion coming. So, he has the intel. How does he reply? It doesn't really seem like he can attack right now. Oh, bats flying in once again. I think that was a triple kill on the Gargs. Ouch. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Gargs against Orcs, it's a risky business. It's a lot of experience for Fly. Of course, the Gargs, that suicide. They don't give experience where the Gargs... Uh, I mean, the bats that suicide don't. The Gargs certainly do give experience. TC now close to four. He's going to get the red camp here. Farseer four already. And, yeah, with Wyvern, you can creep this pretty quick. Levels are really good. Would love to see... Well, they're, they're not going to be destroyers. So the wolves can be super annoying at expansions in fights, even. Level 3 Impale. There's not too much ground, so the Impale is mostly against heroes on Mikael's side. TC comes in, low HP. That's pretty dangerous. Stomp hits the heroes. No healing here on the orc side. That's definitely a bit of a problem. Oh. Heal scroll used. Nicely done by Mikael. Impel coming through. TC in trouble. He's very fast, though. Can he stomp and speed out? He has endurance aura. Oh, there was a little bit of healing. Um, he has endurance aura and the unholy aura. So that's one of the fastest TCs you'll ever see. But the Farseer is not protected. The coil hits from long range. So one of the two heroes is gone. Mikael with a level 2 D. DK rising up close to three, level five on the Crypt Lord. Can he hold this? He will in time. Needs to get the Crypt Lord out at some point. Mikael this time parking the fiends in the base. Could have used them here for a couple of webs. 
He's Partially going confident. down certainly hurts, but uh, might be a little blessing in disguise. It's also solo experience for the TC. His level 5, incredibly strong, and will also be incredibly necessary very soon against these fiends. Yeah. Normally, you cannot beat fiends with Windriders, but if you have a level 5 TC, everything's possible. <laughs> Indeed. Needs to stay in the game, needs to level this up. There's not... Okay, there's still the Nulls and the Turtle for Flight to Creep. More and more bad riders. He has to be aware that there is a Fiend transition coming soon, because then he has to go either more on Raiders for Lockdown or way more Wyvern, so they one-shot at one point. Yeah, Triple Hero would also be wonderful. Shadowhunter coming in for Hex and... Uh... And here wave. Kodos would be nice. Torrens would be amazing, of course, but Torrens are very expensive. Fly can't get that quite yet. He's coming in for the creep deck with single hero. Oh, this looks a little ill-advised. Epicenter Stomp oh, takes one five. fiend out. That is level 5, but also level 3 on the DK. If he can dodge the shots, he can coil a lot. There we see it. It's done a little too late, but the Wyvern can take out the statues here. Fly finds a good angle, can also get out of that fight, and he is getting multiple kills in this. And that was without a fuss here. What is this confidence by Fly? Holy he's going for he's going for a creep deck against a two base unnet when he only has one hero. Yep. It is so impressive to see how he always knows how far he can go and how he can push the limits. Seeing this is the matrix. true mastery. Seeing the matrix indeed. Knows exactly how far he can go. And Mikael commits more and more to gargoyles. This is so easily countered, especially when Chain Lightning could get level 3. Banshees are a nice thing to have because it helps against the damage of Chain Lightning, helps against Envenomed Spear's damage as well. Ooh, TP out right away. But this is another steady for free. He just gets so many easy kills. Yeah. Couple of unforced errors here. Rally points, for example, not always perfect for Mikael, but Fly punishes this so quickly. Both sitting around 50 supplies still. Mikael going slightly over. He's losing some gold right now. Here comes the Shadow Hunter. And with that, the scaling of the org will be very, very strong. Is he just going pure air, nothing else? Yep. Double disable in Stomp and Hex, and then right click with Envenomed Spear Wyvern. This is deadly, like a little glass cannon. Lich will help against that. Anti-magic and curse will help against that as there's no dispel. There might still be a chance for Mikael. Yeah, if he gets up to 70 supply, five banshees with a depth training, this is still doable. The Lich is nice to have on high levels. It's not 100% necessary. But look at this. Fly is just not leaving him alone. He's always pressuring. Always finding openings. And always knowing where he is. This is again two kills. And the coil arrives wow. too late. So it's a wasted mana as well. Chain lightning on the Gargs. And that's easy focus fire soon. Once they get in range. There is a little bit of web. Alright. But now you see the Gargs arrive. Focus fire. And gone. It takes not more than one volley. And the stomp was insane. I got no doubt really that Fly takes this now. now. Once again, he is ahead in this game. It took a while, but now he's got a wonderful position. Lich comes in. Nova is shown. Not too many Wyvern left. And Wyvern definitely need to be in high numbers to really be effective. And we're having fewer and fewer of them now. Next Nova connects. Still, uh, oh, the TC is close to that. six. He's going for the Lich. He saw, man, this is way too much damage from your Nova and your... Not even Orb of Corruption, so let's take him out. And there's the next Hex. This lockdown is crazy. And again, he's pushing into the Undead expansion, into the Undead Towers. Oh, Invo Potion last second. But this might not last very, very long. He just waits the seven seconds and kills him, right? Next Hex is ready. Wolf, Hex, right click. Kill, uh, uh. <laughs> Combined forces doesn't work. Unholy aura region. The wolves are gonna try their luck again. 
Regen is really good. Catches the next one. Here's another Hex. Impale before Storm. This can be dangerous on the level 5 TC. Oh boy, if he falls. That's expensive. But walks it off, of course. Yeah, I had the invul there still. Six Wyvern casually ooh, parked ooh, in the main. Why not? Pretty sick. Pretty yeah. damn sick. Would love to see an Orb of Lightning here as well. Or maybe just another tiny Great Hall. Fly inches away from his first Gold Series playoffs in two years. Didn't have the best runs the years afterwards. Always in the group stage eliminated. One of the three players, by the way, that played all 11 gold leagues. Now on day one, Fly was still playing a little greedy, playing a little risky, taking some dangerous engagements that I think he didn't really need to against Zhao Kai. He was uh, risking a few too many things there, in my opinion. But here today, holy smokes. What a performance, <laughs> yeah. great preparation, amazing plays, and just the game sense at all times, knowing exactly how far he can push it and what he can do. And all that so without his Razor headset. The infamous pink one. Works without it, apparently. Wolf Scout always. What's the way out for Mikhail? Of course, you don't want to go into the lower bracket when you know that a sock in better shape might be waiting there, that a Shao Kai in very, very good shape might be waiting there. But the way out for him is so brutal. Ooh, I thought for a second the wolf gets it. Shadowhunter even getting level 3 now. He didn't skill his other points yet. Don't tell me he's gonna go Serpent Wards. <laughs> <laughs> Could be fun. No, he'll wave it is. Now he decides. Lich, Lich doesn't have the orb. Not too sure if I... Like, no, I don't like it. I wonder why. I mean, of course the Crypt Lord can attack air with that. But it's so much more control. Okay. The Hail Mary start. All right. Two base once again for Fly here established. The thing is, with Laho late, he expanded. Of course, his natural is going to be lasting way longer. Mikhail's natural is going to run out sort of soon. So the undead under pressure. He's got a bit of a supply lead now, but he's real far down in hero levels. Yeah, the fact that Mikhail can m make this game uh, this 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 game last so long is quite impressive. He's crumbling, but he's never really dying, as he is on two bases all the time. Supply lead even for him. So I think he never... Uh, wow, that's a lot of fiends all of a sudden. I don't think I've ever seen the supply cap 93 before. <laughs> might be a first for me. With uh, two tiny great halls for sure. As great halls right. now give 11 supply. Fight starting off, TC trying to get into the right position, getting nuked hard. There's no walkers here to protect him with Spirit Link. One thing perhaps that Fly is missing, but he's coming in with a perfect stomp. Good damage. TC close to level 6, by the way. Getting focused again. Impale, Coil Nova, heal wave! Oh my god, that invul potion! He didn't use the invul! Fly, uh oh no. Fly! Are you kidding me? The undead comeback. Will we see it? Counter focus on that lich. He's out, but maybe the least important hero of all of them trades it. And oh, ho, ho, we get the locust swarm. Is that really too effective? Okay, the wyvern disappear. Fly plummets to 4T supply. Level 4 on the shadow hunter. Okay, but that doesn't really do too much. It's just a longer duration of the hex. Murlocs get involved. Wyvern parked in the middle. They want to get their TC back. It's the second wyvern gone. Kodos in focus fire. There's still good piercing damage. TC has a mana potion. Mikael must be aware that this is happening. Trying to intercept to the right-hand side. He is still so speedy with the Endurance Aura, with the Unholy Aura. That's a Farseer level 6. And the TC also only one kill away. He's going for the big beetle. Can he squish the beetle? Not quite. That won't be getting out. Not but yet. the TK now getting hexed. Another stomp. Do we He's have so it? Fast. The mana? He doesn't have the potion anymore. He used that, but the blocks might still be good enough. Ooh, close, 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 close. But the fiends are also hurt. Now, into the undead base. Do you really want to risk it? Level 6. 
Level 3 Chain Lightning bouncing through. TC level 6 and now unkillable with the ultimate, the reincarnation. Has a crazy long cooldown. I think it's like 4 minutes. But he will also you come will back with full mana, control. full HP. So it seems like it's never a good idea to kill him in the first place. But Mikhail, you know, showing shines <laughs> of life. <laughs> yeah. Proving that he can still hang. Big mistake there, of course, by Vlad not popping the invul. If he does, this game ends right there. That but was... now we are still, I guess, in a, in a competitive game. That was incredibly expensive. Level 5 hero tavern revive. 600 yeah, gold or something? 550? Something uh, around yeah, that uh, It's even number. more than 600. It's like, I think it's like 680 or something. <sighs> That's you a you tiny great hall. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hex again, follow up with the Stomp, perfect position, focus with the Chain Lightning, and the DK is wow. dead! Stun okay. locked, just like in a MOBA game, he couldn't do anything. Utterly disabled. Wow, Fly comes back, seeking for revenge, level 3 Lich, finally! The Crypt Lord is just suffering, the heroes are just suffering, wow. just like game 1 ended, so does this one! GG Fly advancing to the playoffs for the first time in two years! What a group stage performance, I am incredibly impressed, little bit of a blunder there by losing the TC, but come on, let's cut him some slack, almost everything else was scary! Yeah, and the thing else to consider is here, of course, Fly played insanely well. I want to echo what you said. In incredible performance. One of my top favorites for this tournament now. Yeah. He showed before how insane he is against Night Elf. Now he shows it against Undead. Against Human, we'll have to wait and see still. But yeah, this was insane. But this was... He played against Script Lord twice. And he got surrounded twice in the early game. Yeah. Usually that puts you behind by a mile. Yeah. And then he plays it like that. That was... Also, crazy. the guts, like how confident he was in everything he did. Jumping this expansion, running into the towers, canceling it multiple times, sacrificing the level one TC for it. It was all the right things. Yeah. And then losing the fight, slipping once, and you can think, oh, oh, maybe is it starting a comeback or something? But he powers up. Goes for the push and goes for the throat and finishes Michael in a fashion that's not even funny. Insane storms, insane reads, great game sense. Uh, wonderfully done. Mikhail should have definitely gone for Destroyer, I believe. It's very hard to manage. If it's mispositioned, it dies so fast to the Wind Riders. But having that dispel against Hex, usually crucial. Maybe Fiends could have been able to protect it against the Wind Riders, but Mikael refused to make destroyers as many undeads do nowadays. Yeah. That that creep jack we just saw there. Who the hell goes creep jacking when the Farseer is dead with a TC only? <laughs> that was so good. That was not your typical orc play. Far, far, far away from it. Very hard to estimate for Mikael what Fly's next move is always. He was a little suicidal at, at points, but it works. Even when he lost the TC, still got the Lich, prevented level 3 for a while. Fought through the... Sp uh, the... Yeah, I was about to say Carrion Swarm. Locust Swarm! Impressive. This is really... Fly could win the two big tournaments back to back. WCG, WGL, if he continues like this. Yeah, definitely uh, one of the best performances here so far in the group stage. Fly looked really good, I would say. So did Lawliot. And Moon, of course, as always. Infi had one off game, but, you know, the legends are showing up once again. For a little while there, it seemed like Fly was out of the ranks of tier one players, but he is certainly back among them. Yeah, I... At one point, I think it was like two years ago or something, I kind of gave up on him. It was at points sometimes, like... It felt pathetic. He was losing his heroes like five, six times in a game. It was He was just off. But of course, he became a father at that time. So priorities were most likely a little different. Now that the worst is over in that regard, he's again one of the best representatives of the Horde. That is Fly.
and that is Focus this winter, who yesterday destroyed Lin. So two orcs, two top favorites for the title. I heard that Possibly. orcs are unplayable nowadays. <laughs> yeah, in Europe we have barely any representatives, but these top three looking really good. In fact, in the player interviews, quite a few people said this is the time for the orcs. This is the patch for the orcs. They've certainly been some nice updates and focus showing up in great shape. It's of course not about the patch, it's about the level of play. What Fly has been able to do recently, just amazing. And Focus also looking really good. It's them picking up the mantle when Lin is not in his best shape ever. Yeah, really nice to see. So this map, this match was about who's advancing to the playoffs. That is also prize money ranks, by the way. So for this performance, already $1,200 for Fly, and it's a uh, very top heavy here can boost it up to thirty thousand dollars. Fifty percent of the prize pool, boom to the winner. Mikhail will still fighting for survival. He will meet the winner of neck of the next match. It's the lower bracket semifinal. Shao Kai versus Sock. Will it be the big disappointment for Sock, who had an incredible rise recently? Or the big story of Shao Kai. There is a second chance for sure. We're gonna see Fly in the winner interview before, then a little break, and then the lower bracket. I, it feels so bad for either of the players being eliminated next year. Shao Kai had a wonderful fall. Ah, here we go. We have Fly by uh, with us and Aragon Wong ready for the translation. So we will translate as soon as we can. 成为了第一个晋级到八强的选手啊这个弗莱的粉丝们来隔着我们的这个镜头给点掌声嗨嗨好那我们的第一个问题跟比赛有关呃以前的 so first question here is, uh, Fly, it seems like you're in a great shape. You are the WCG double champion with the solo and the team win. And also now the first player advancing into the playoffs. In the past, it was always DK first against Undead, but here Lucifer or Mikael used uh, Crypt Lord twice. And you get, uh, or you, you got surrounded three times. What do you say about that? <laughs> Uh, pointing out the mistakes, well done. Fly's answer, um, or the question is, how do you counter it? So, Fly's answer is, the Crypt Lord is very good at surrounding with Impale and all the units they have, so beetles and ghouls and skeletons. We need to pay attention, need uh, to be on our feet. Telestaff is good and just hero positioning, that's the key. The second map, Fly was really close, but the creep jack was an absolute game changer. How did you know he's over there? And the answer is scouting with wolves. Scouting, always very important, guys. Just, I scouted his position with the wolf. I saw he didn't have a TP and he crept the spot. So uh, I crept the other half and I know where he is. So when the TC was almost level 6, but it got killed, 
we here, we kind of thought you lose the game, but uh, nevertheless, you won it. So what was going through your head when you lost that TC? Okay. So, Fly's answer to that. Um, actually, I think I'm in the leading position right before the fight. I uh, unfortunately forgot to change the hotkeys uh, for the inventory, so that's why I couldn't really press my invo potion. Whoopsie! Little bit uh, of a hiccup there. Should definitely do that in the playoffs, Fly. So yeah, it was a hard key mistake. <laughs> what? <laughs> the fan question is, how big is your hard drive? <laughs> and the answer is, my hard drive is infinitely big. I always delete the useless files. Nice. <laughs> okay, maybe there's some jokes that uh, we here in the West don't really get. <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting for sure. <laughs> Wong, thank you so much for the translation. Our next match is coming up. It's going to be Shao Kai versus Sog. We have uh, one sub here since uh, we broadcasted this. Of course, we have once again all the alerts off to keep the broadcast clean. It's Kladai and with the tier two sub even. Get a high five for that, my man. Ten months in a row. WGL. Thank you guys for the support. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And we have a Discord server. Hit all the likes and all the sub buttons you can find. Of course, uh, we are on the way to 100,000 followers here on Twitch. So hit that button in the bottom right as well. And while you're there, there's a little sub button. If you want to support us financially a little, hit it. You get a couple of cool emotes and support the channel back to Warcraft for what we do. We have a YouTube channel as well. If you want to catch up with games, there is also a couple of highlights uh, from every day. And also the dream hacks provided by Art of Warcraft. So if you want to give some love over to Art, you can find him on the typical socials as well. Little break and then it's time. Do or die for Sock and Shao Kai.